Hey everybody, 16 Out Setups here. As I've been working pretty remote for the past year or so, I've found the desire to travel while I'm working. I'm sure, like many of you are aware, I like having multiple monitors along with my laptop, but it's not really something that's feasible to break down and take with me on the road. So if you're looking for a portable setup that you can take with you anywhere, but you don't want to lose the functionality of multiple monitors, we can start to talk about portable monitors. Now, first we need to ask ourselves if you need a portable monitor. Now, the obvious solution, as we've already kind of talked about, is traveling. If you're traveling a lot, then a portable monitor is a great solution to bring an extra screen with you, especially if you need that screen real estate. Something that you might not think about is if you have limited power capabilities. If you, for some reason, don't have access to an additional outlet that you need to plug into a monitor, there are pass-through power portable monitor options that you can simply plug into your laptop or computer, and it'll be good to go without the need for an additional power source. Another option that I personally haven't explored but I've seen used elsewhere is if you're looking for an additional monitor for your mobile device. This can be like if you have a super small smartphone, I know I have the iPhone mini so maybe having access to an additional monitor would be stellar, or even if you just want to extend a tablet. This is something that you can use a portable monitor for. And finally, it really is the ultimate minimal solution. If you're looking for the most minimal, lightweight, small footprint, extra screen you can have, portable monitor might be the solution for you. There are no additional extra cords, no additional extra outlets to an extent, and it's really the most minimal option if you're just looking for the bare bones minimal extra screen. So now that you've decided you want a portable monitor, we need to start talking about some considerations so you can apply this to your particular setup. The first obvious consideration you're gonna to wanna to think about is your screen size and your resolution. Now I'd say this is entirely dependent on how lightweight or how small or large you want your extra screen to be. If you want the most screen real estate possible, you're obviously wanna be looking at some larger portable monitor options, but there are super, super small options out there as well. And this goes hand in hand with resolution. I'm of the opinion that you don't need to be shelling out lots of money for a 1440p or a 4K monitor if you're you know, just using this as a temporary setup on the go. I think it's worth just getting a 1080p monitor and saving some money, but you can absolutely go crazy if you want to. Along the same lines, we can start thinking about portable monitor weights. Obviously, the larger the screen is, the more your monitor is going to weigh. This might be an important consideration if you're just gonna be throwing your monitor in a backpack, but if you're in a more permanent setting, it might not be as big of a factor for you. Now we're gonna start talking about some of the functionality you might wanna consider, and I think we can really split this into two categories. We have physical functionality and tech functionality. On the physical side of things, we can start talking about monitor stands. Does your monitor have a stand that's gonna fold in or out? Does it fold forwards or backwards? Does it raise your monitor up and down to be more ergonomic? You can also think about the footprint in this case. Does your monitor have any kind of case that's gonna protect it? Is it gonna have a hard case or a soft case that might help or hinder the screen? And think about some ergonomics as well. All of this, the stands, the folding in and out is gonna play a big role on whether it meets the needs for your particular posture, if your monitor is on the right eye level, et cetera, et cetera. So make sure to think about the physical aspects of your monitor and not just the tech. That being said, some tech functionality will come into play here. The first thing I feel like is really overlooked are your ports. Think about what kind of ports you use on a daily basis, whether it be USB-C ports, whether you need an extra display port or HDMI port to hook up an additional screen to, or even if you need some old school USB ports. These are all important things to consider and something that's gonna vary across different models. Some portable monitors out there also have a touchscreen option. I know that's not really of interest to me, but if you're on something like a Mac ecosystem, using something like an iPad, which has a touchscreen as an extra monitor, might be very user-friendly for you. Think about what kind of physical buttons you want on your monitor. Do you need volume keys? Do you want an extra power sleep button? Do you need additional buttons that aren't gonna be typically provided? These are just some more things to think about. If you're gaming or even consuming media, it's definitely worth discussing screen technologies as well. You might be wanting a higher refresh rate here. You might be considering IPS panel over VA or TN, and you probably are gonna be wanting a lower response time. And finally, think about what kind of software and drivers you may or may not need. If you're on a super old version of Windows, if you're on Linux or Mac, 
these are things you're going to want to make sure are going to be compatible if you were to get a portable monitor. If you really need something that's just plug and play, this might be something that you need to do a little more research on to make sure it'll fit your criteria. I do think power is an important discussion to have here as well. Typically on a regular monitor, you're going to have two cords that are absolutely necessary. You're going to need some kind of display port cable or HDMI cable to let the screen data pass through and you're going to need a power cable. However, with portable monitors, you definitely have the option to just use one cable that will utilize the power from your computer source and that will power the monitor itself. And this is something that was really important to me as I just wanted to stick to the most minimal option I could when I was traveling to just worry about one cord. Again, totally subjective, but just think about what you're going to need in this case. And finally, the last thing you're going to want to consider are your aesthetics. This may be more or less important depending on your use case. Don't think this is as important as the other options, but if you're going for a pretty concise and clear theme, maybe something you want to consider. So the particular monitor that I ended up using and actually got the test drive over this past week is the Lenovo ThinkVision M15. And this really checks all the boxes that I was looking for for my personal requirements. It's got an awesome screen size at 15 and a half inches, which is actually comparable to my laptop. It's got a pretty light weight, so it's easy to just throw it in my backpack without noticing too much of a difference. It's got all that physical functionality that I was talking about. It folds out from the back very cleanly, small footprint, comes with a case so the screen is protected when I'm not using it. And it's got awesome ergonomic capability as well. The screen is pretty adjustable, even has little feet that can raise the screen so the monitor will get closer to eye level. Also check the very important box for me, which is power pass through. So it can use just one cable to transfer all of my imaging, audio, and power over to the monitor itself. So I only need one additional cable with this thing to travel. Also has some other standard features like a power button, Kensington lock, and an additional USB-C port that you can use in addition to your power pass through USB-C port. And finally, I do think this thing looks pretty good. I think for some of the more cleaner options, you're spending a lot more money and ultimately the features that you're getting at the more expensive price ranges aren't something that I think is gonna win me over for twice the price. But as stated previously, this monitor fits my particular setup, but it may not fit yours. So please use this video as a guide to find a portable monitor that will be suited to you and not as a review of this particular setup. I know there are plenty of options out there for every type of person. If you have more money to spend, feel free to go for a crazy, awesome, really nice looking option. If you have a little bit less money, feel free to compromise in some areas as well. It's all about what fits your particular setup and what kind of options you're looking for. And as always, this is 16 ounce setups. I grabbed this double espresso from Starbucks in the hotel lobby. I gotta say it was very, very dark, even on the verge of burnt. I'm not necessarily complaining here. It's just a little easier to taste imperfections in coffee when you start pulling your own shots at home. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.